I mean, who would not want this car in their collection for just $30? Hello everyone, welcome to the channel, this is Barrett from Barrett Collector. Today we're going to take a look at what I think are the top 5 best cards from the Scarlet and Violet era that could be a potential good investment for the future. So we're going to take a look at all these sets that we've seen so far in the Scarlet and Violet era, see the prices in both the American, as you can see here, we are on TCG Player currently, and the European market, look at the box prices, see what some of these cards are selling for in a PSA 10, look at some population reports, and then I'll give you, in the end, my own opinion. So let's get started with Scarlet and Violet Base. As you can see here, we are in TCG Player and we sorted by best selling. So what I think is the main chase card in this set is the Gardevoir EX. Now, Gardevoir is played, so that could bring the price of the card itself higher. However, I don't think the Miriam might do well long term, or at least my personal opinion, I'm not a big fan of wifey cards, I do prefer Pokemon themselves, and if I take a look at the list of what this set at, has to offer, the only good card that I see in terms of artwork, and I mean, there's plenty of good cards, but what really amazes me is the artwork in this great Tusky X, just an SIR that just looks simply amazing, I, look at the colors here, just gorgeous in my opinion, and I mean, for just below $6, doesn't seem like a bad buy either way. I'm just if you just enjoy the car, you could just get it for for cheap. Now, when it comes to long-term investing, or at least try to understand what cards could do well in the future, I only see potential value in the card war X. I would ideally like to focus on cards that are well known, the big hitters, Lugia, Zards, Rayquazas. I don't see really any point in buying the Maraidon or the Coridon EX. I do think these artworks are great and uh, what I do think about the Scarlet and Violet era as a whole is the pull rate on the boxes. Pokemon did a good thing in just putting people in the position uh, of being able to pull IR and SIR over a decent amount of packs and I think that long term, and I've said it before, I'll say it again, could drive the prices of the boxes higher because people will want to open the set because they, they'll they know that most likely they're going to at least hit an SIR, an AR in their boxes. So I have to be honest, base set is, in my opinion, the weakest set that we've seen so far for the Scarlet and Violet era. So I, I, I just won't spend too much time on it. I'll just say that a box currently goes for $90 shipped in the US and then between 95 to 100 euros in the European market before shipping. So moving on to the next set in the Scarlet and Violet era, which is Pull the Evolved. Now, what I think is without a doubt, and I've seen some other YouTuber recently uploaded in a video on the same card and another one that I'm gonna show you today. Now, I'm no one who's much well known than I am, but I mean, you would just see it the same way out. I'm not cheating, I'm not copying, I'm just, I just believe it as well, is this Magikarp. Regular illustration rare, which is selling for about 60 euros, $60. I really, there's not really much of a big difference when it comes to single cards, raw cards between the European and the American market, at least for modern cards. It's, it's a bit different when, when it comes to, to vintage. So I, I won't go over that. I just take a look at the, the, the prices of the box themselves, which are actually pretty different. And I mean, I personally like the artwork. Many people don't. I do, and just some numbers out there should be popping up as well on the screen. This Magikarp is currently selling for between $350 to $400. Now, the last sales on eBay was $400 for best offer, and the last auction went on for $330, again, in a PSA 10. Interesting numbers, we know the set is young, just been released, but we just have 203 PSA 10s as of right now, and 726 PSA 9s, which the ratio is much different than what we've been used to see in this Sword and Shield era. Now again, I do believe this is a much stronger set than base set. I do like the Tarantar as well, which is also another car in my list. Again, the Magic Core, Tyrantar, cards that are well known, which I believe, or at least I think, again, just my own opinion, 
could do well in the future because of how popular they are and also the artwork is in this car i do prefer the magic combo with the tyranitar but still i think they're both gorgeous cars and this guy is selling for about 150 to 170 dollars in a psa 10 and there are currently only 85 psa 10 graded cards of this card and 319 psa 9s again today is december 8th as a recording so you guys have some numbers for reference now Mr. P is selling for $98 a box shipped in the US and again between 95 to 100 euros before shipping in the European Union. On to the third set of the Scarlet and Violet era, which is Obsidian Flame. Now, as many people said it, I'm sure they'll keep saying it. I can only agree this is mainly a Charizard set. There's not really much more to it. Yes, you do have some cards that are in my opinion, good looking and cheap. One thing that is pretty clear throughout the Skull Invader era is that Illustration Rare and SIR are cheap because of the pull rates as we discussed earlier, which is why, again, I'll say it again, I'll say it to Oblivion, put boxes could do well in the future. People, I believe, will want to open these sets. So now the only thing that is interesting about this Charger EX, which is also on my list, is what it goes for in a PSA 10. As you can see here, it does go around 60 to 70 dollars raw, and it sells for 300 to 350 dollars in a PSA 10. The last one went for auction at 335 dollars. And here we have a much higher number of PSA graded cards, despite the fact that this set is younger than Pull the Evolved. We have 1,143 PSA 10s graded copy and then 2,504 PSA 9. And this is actually almost a 50% relationship between 9s and 10s, whereas if we take the Modgicar for instance or the Tetranitron as well, it came down to a bit below of a 30% PSA 10 ratio with the 9s. And a sealed box of Seed in Flame goes for $105 shipped in the US and again between 95 to 100 euros plus shipping in the European Union. Moving on to what I think is the best set of the Scarlet and Violet era so far. And to, for that, I made a specific video about it. It's my last video. Should be popping up right now as I'm speaking. I explain why I believe this is the best set of the year. And I also add uh, the Scarlet and Violet era so far. So I'll honestly won't talk about it that much today. I just simply believe that basically every card in here is a big hitter and whatever card you're going to pull out of a pack, you're most likely going to be satisfied. And when it comes to sealed product prices, again, you can check out my previous video as there's not really as I go over it in depth, but just notice that a sealed display goes for around $440 in the US, whereas it's really hard to come by in the European market and the only one I found was on eBay for 500 euros free shipping in Italy. Now, last but not least, we have Paradox Rift, which I just picked up a box recently for cheap, at least what is considered cheap in the European Union. And this is an interesting set. What I'm mainly concerned is how well this Roaring Moon EX will do in the future, because the fact that it's now played in the meta obviously drives the price higher than what it might actually be once it gets out of rotation. If you think about it, this card is only second, correct me if I'm wrong, to the Charizard EX in 151. So does this deserve to be the second most expensive card in the Card and Butter era? I mean, it's I do like the artwork. I think it's great, but should it really be this expensive? Apart from that, what I think are big hitters are the Crowden Regular Illustration Rare and the Steelix Illustration rare now and i honestly didn't look at the pop reports number for this set as it really just came out and i don't really think it's even worth taking a look at because well, there'll be plenty in the future which you could argue is going to happen to all the other sets that we're taking a look at today but at least those had a few months to get older whereas this already 
just came out. And uh, the Steelix, the only sale I could find was a recent sale for $100 in a PSA 10 sold for best offer, which again, quite a lot considering this is just a $10 card, but we've seen print quality of Scarlet and Violet era. And we've also seen, plus the fact that it's just a brand new set doesn't surprise me that the prices are still pretty high. So it'll be interesting to see how the Groudon will do in the long term. I do think this is a, a card to, to hold on to. I mean, if you just look at it, how could you not want this card even raw in your collection? Just look at the artwork. I think I think this is better than the Rory Moon, to be honest. And I also think this is a more iconic Pokemon than the Rory Moon. I would like to know your opinion. I'm happy if we disagree. But again, when it comes to investing in the Pokemon market, I do believe it would be better to do so in cards that you know at least will not lose value drastically in the future. Now, a box of this set sells for around $100 shipped in the US and also in the EU between 100 to 105 euros before shipping. And then, my personal opinion on these cards I mean, they were what I think people will most likely sought after in the future, at least the near term future. And it's not a big brainer. You already see in the PSA prices of this card how people want them and they pay for them. Think about the Magikarp, think about the Tyranitar, as well as the Charizard for Obsidian Flames. They want a PSA 10 and they're willing to pay even 5x their raw prices, 5 to 10x their raw prices, as long as they get their PSA 10 copy of this card. And again, what I strongly believe is how people most likely will want to open these sets in the future which is why getting a box for about hundred dollars doesn't sound like a bad idea mainly because of the downside risk associated with that is it going to go much lower than ninety two hundred dollars it might but once it gets out of print you could at least see it going back to msrp and that will already be what a 40 50 percent gain on your money and even if it takes three to four years still 50 percent over three to four years you did so with limited downside risk now again this is only my opinion let me know in the comments what you think about this card let me know what you think about the scarlet and violet era as a whole if you do enjoy the content don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss any update i bring to the channel please consider leaving a like if you enjoyed the video and i'll see you in the next one